dear friends good evening and welcome to yr so the whole emphasis of yr is to encourage each one of y'all and also the entire audience in order to ask questions and thus by asking questions to deliberate and find solutions to various problems in today's world we see that we are more content with accepting things as they are but if we question certain things we can make the world and the reality a much better place for us as well as for the future generations as well so since today is the first episode i can say of the yr so before that let me take you through to exactly what we have in mind in this yr first and foremost when we speak of the concept but the yr is a platform where participants are invited to broaden their horizons and in this way we want to give you all an opportunity or a start in order to broaden your horizons to think out of the box and to look at reality in a different manner next we also look at issues which affect the lives of an average citizen but we look at it from a different perspective not the one that we are used to watching now what are the aims that we have in mind so first and foremost it is to enab enable the participants to think out of the box at the same time we also want to train each and each and every one of you on various ways of approaching a particular scenario sometimes we may be bogged down to just one particular kind of approach and therefore as we proceed in the sessions of the via you will slowly come to know various other techniques at how we can philosophize and look at reality from a different perspective and most importantly how we can use these techniques in order to change certain things in our day to day living or in the context in which we live in next it is to prepare the participants to become responsible citizens who are able to reason out now when a study was conducted 2 years back it was felt that even though many states in india have high literacy rate but the students and the citizens were not able to reason out and therefore we see that the report emphasized that the students and the citizens be taught how to question how to reason out and thus arrive at suitable and positive conclusions in life and this will be one of the aims that we want to spread across as well that we need to reason out we need to critically analyze everything that comes in our way next we also have one of the aims as to promote among the participants the desire and interest in issues that affect the lives of common people now we see that most of the issues that will be taking up in this forum will apply to our lives in some way or the other sometimes directly or sometimes indirectly and we also want to make you aware of issues and their adverse consequences and next we also want to unearth the intellectual curiosity that is hidden in each and every one of us finally we want to awaken that problem solving ability in each and every one of you who participate in this forum called the yr now the duration of this as the name suggests will be 60 minutes once a month and since this being the first session or the first forum we will be having one every month and you will be informed about it or notified about it when the days come by let me jump in directly to today's main topic now as you would have seen in the poster that the issue that we want to deal with today and the theme is delusional freedom and basically this theme has been taken 
from an article that was published on the print. So delusional freedom asks us the question, are we really free? I mean, we have learned in school, we have learned in our constitutions as well, that we are a country wherein there is the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and various other rights and duties of the citizens, as well as a certain amount of freedoms. Now, is that just on paper or is it a reality? That is what we are going to deliberate in today's YR. So let's take a look at our current situation. So first and foremost, we have seen many incidents taking place in our country. And this has led each and every one of us probably to question the fact that do we have freedom of expression? Are we able to express our opinions, our views in the best possible manner? Next, there's also been a wide use of sedition law. And this is also one of the things which doesn't make one very comfortable and doesn't make one feel very safe. Next, manipulation of evidence. There has been certain cases wherein this has taken place and the very sight of it or the very fact of it makes citizens as such begin to think twice. Sometimes the norm is better be quiet and be safe. And the entire discussion has particularly come about from the report of Freedom Houses, Freedom in the World, which has reduced India's status from a free country to a partly free country. Now, what are the reasons cited for this? So if you look at the report of Freedom Houses, Freedom in the World, it has downgraded India's status and giving it a global freedom score of 67 out of 100. Now this they have done by judging the country on various political rights and civil liberties. Now the report has also noted a multi-year pattern in which there's been a downslide with regards to the gradation points. For example, in 2018, the score was 75 out of 100. In 2019, it was 71, and in 2020, it, it was 67. And one of the reasons for this has been rising violence and discriminatory policies affecting the Muslim population. Now, this report basically focuses on the violence and discriminatory policies against the Muslim population. But we as citizens will very well know that there has been a lot of violence against Christians and also again against other minorities present in the nation. Next, there was also a crackdown on expressions of dissent by media, academics, civil society groups and protesters. That means if you spoke anything against the government or anything against those in power, there could be consequences for the person who was vocal and who spoke out. So looking at this, we can now move on to the other part, which also uh, which the report also states that criminal charges were also filed against journalists, students and others under the colonial era sedition laws. At the same time, the Information Technology Act in response to the speech perceived as critical of the government, notably including expressions of opposition to the new citizen legislation and the discussion of the official response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this report was published by a US-based nonprofit organization called Freedom House. And this is funded by the US government and conducts research into democracy and political freedom around the world. So this report basically deals with three main points. And the first of this point is discriminatory action against Muslims. But before looking at that, let's take a look what's on paper. That means 
what is supposed to be a reality in our country. So first and foremost, we know that India has a population of nearly around 80% of Hindus. We are said to be formally secular. And even the constitution guarantees every person the right to practice and follow his or her own religion. Apart from that, we see that even freedom of religion is constitutionally guaranteed. And having said this, in reality, what has happened? First, we have seen that there's been promotion of anti-Muslim views. Now, it is said that in the Delhi riots of February 2020, at least 53 people, mostly Muslims, were killed amid violence that followed weeks of demonstrations against discriminatory charges to the country's citizenship law. And it is also said that the implementation of the CAA, that is the Citizenship Amendment Act, and the government's intention for a national register of citizens threatened to defranchise Muslim voters by effectively classifying them as illegal, illegal immigrants. Apart from that, there was the report also mentioned how cow vigilantism and sad attacks against Muslims and others in connection with alleged slaughter and mistreatment of cows continued in the year 2020. At the same time, Muslims were also blamed for the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in early weeks of the pandemic by members of the ruling party. Besides that, the acquittal of several leaders in the Babri Masjid demolition case in September last year. Next, the report also focuses on lack of freedom in institutions. Now, the report also alleged that freedom of various institutions, such as the Election Commission of India and the Supreme Court have been called into question. In a way, we see that the panel's decisions concerning the timing and phasing of national elections and the allegations of selective enforcement of the model code of conduct, which regulates politicians' campaign behaviors and techniques, suggested a bias towards the ruling party. As a result, we see that whatever decisions were taken were taken in order to favor the ruling party or also were taken in order to boost their performance and chances of a possible victory. At the same time, we see that talking about the amendment of the Right to Information Act, it is noted that the salaries and tenures of the information commissioners were placed under the direct control of the central government. As a result, potentially exposing the commissioners to political pressure. At the same time, it was also noted that concerns related to the commissions, there were concerns that were filed by the ruling party loyalists. And later it was also noted that with regards to the Supreme Court verdicts, there were a lot of bias and decisions that were favorable to the ruling party as well as to certain members of the ruling party, specifically mentioning the 2019 verdict allowing the construction of Ram Mandir on the site where the demolished Babri Masjid stood. It was also remarked on the transfer of Justice S. Murliadar in February from Delhi to Punjab and Haryana High Court and the appointment of former Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi to the Rajya Sabha. Apart from this, the report also focuses on the last point and the third point, that is the freedom of media and expression. Now, the report also said that authorities have used security, defamation, sedition, and hate speech laws, as well as contempt of court charges to quiet voices in the media. And it is also said that reporting has now become less ambitious because even reporters in a certain way are afraid of being courageous and being aggressive when it comes to their reportive. Some of them are also have been called anti-national 
for bringing certain issues into the light. At the same time, there's also added pressure on many of the journalists in order to report favorably. And as a result of this, many of the prominent journalists who do not want to compromise with their ethics of reporting have been forced to quit their jobs. And some of them have also started reporting in private. And thus we see that at the same time, academic freedom has also declined as in academics, professors and students are intimidated in, in ways to take certain topics and certain topics have been added into the syllabus, which have been pro the ruling government and also which have tried to introduce certain truths or truths in inverted commas into the syllabus. And lastly, the case that we are all familiar with, the Stan Swami case. And here there are several points or questions that one can ask. An innocent victim, manipulation and fabrication of evidence, unjust justice system, or is it a question of human justice, inhuman justice? So now the floor is open and the first round we could possibly think about and each one could express their opinion as to what do you say about this? How do you look at the current situation of the country? How do you look at this current issue? And do you feel that we are free or is it just a delusional kind of a freedom? Is it something just in the air? And next, probably we can then suggest some means that each one of us can do on a small scale or grassroots level. We can begin with uh, some of the interventions. So those who feel free, kindly uh, unmute and uh, you could state your views and opinions on the uh, current uh, issue that we have been dealing with today. I fully agree. There is a lot of muffling going on with the voices speaking out freely. Now, I don't know where it is going to take all of us because uh, we are a heterogeneous group. And so I'm quite worried as to how we'll be able to get out of this uh, because there's a lot of hurt also happening in the process. Is it possible at all to go? I mean, it's not possible to go unscathed. So somebody has to, I mean, we all would get bruised in this whole thing when we voice out our opinions. But is there a possibility of the heterogeneous uh, group coming together as at least, you know, a unified voice, not necessarily as a one voice, but a united voice? is uh, what I've been pondering upon for a long time. But the silencing is going on in several ways. It is going on. Not only against the minorities, but even within what you would, what normally we would call a majority group, there are voices like mine who are worried and we are also getting muffled or overpowered. So we are a minority to, I mean, to say so. Thank you. Uh, friends, this is not a class, so we can always uh, just come in and talk. Uh, so the numbers are normally small and will be small for such meetings, but uh, we would like that to be small so that everyone can have a discussion. It's a discussion forum. So please, uh, unless you want us to call you by name and then honor you and then invite you, please. Uh, it, for me also, it is very evident. 
when I read the news and hear from others and as uh, uh, brother presented, I know I, I can see your name. So it's very evident that uh, things are going out of hand and our voices have been suppressed and we are compelled to have a kind of hopelessness and fear in uh, giving voice. But uh, rather, I, but I would not agree with the uh, title delusion. It is there, freedom is there, but partially it has been uh, externally, by the external force it has been uh, suppressed or reduced. But uh, we all, our uh, freedom within, which is within us or uh, the freedom with which we are able to think wide, it has not been affected. Our thoughts uh, are still free, uh, still free. Um, uh, but uh, as you also said, the syllabus, by changing the syllabus and uh, uh, education pattern, they are also able to uh, th make people uh, think in a way which in which uh, their ideologies and thoughts are promoted. So that side also uh, we have some effects, uh, but I think more or less uh, as as a general human beings, we, our rational capacity has not been entirely delu uh, reduced, and therefore we can conclude like our freedom is delusion. Uh, it's a delusion. It is reality but a suppressed reality now because of the external uh, forces. So as a solution, I would say we have to be very creative to come up uh, with uh, several ideas. Uh, think out of the box, as you were saying, think out of the box to express our own uh, think thoughts which come out uh, for ourselves as uh, free beings. Yeah, thank you, Hansel, for those uh, lovely views. Uh, we can also expect the others to uh, share their opinions on this. So then finally, when there are 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we can then possibly brainstorm a few ideas as to how we can basically move forward. So, or what we could do at grassroots levels. Uh, I would, uh, I would uh, disagree. I won't say fully disagree, but uh, rather uh, I won't agree completely with what Hansel has said about. You know, he doesn't agree with that title delusional. Uh, the thing is, what has been, what has happened, or what has rather been happening, it is not a sudden thing. Uh, you see, the freedom, what uh, we are saying, it it has been curtailed. It is a very slow process, like that. The story of a frog who fell in a uh, in the water water container and then the container was slowly heated up so that this fellow didn't know that the temperature was going up and it died slowly rather than you know plunging it into a boiling water and sudden death so the curtailing of our rights and freedom it has been a steady process which has been happening in uh, for almost now two decades but ever since the current political change, we can say it has been happening on a, not a covert basis, rather, rather openly, uh, slowly by slowly our judicial systems, media, all the, uh, the very basis, the pillars of democracy have been taken over by an ideology. And then slowly by slowly, we have been injected with this poison. So I, I would agree with the term, it's a freedom. What we are living in is delusional. Not entirely, but yeah, slowly by slowly it is being taken away. And unless we respond to it in some point right now, um, I guess what we will lose, it will be very difficult to get back. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Savio, for those uh, views. I would uh, not uh, present any personal view, but I would like to rather 
I'll raise a few more questions to all the three of you who just now spoke. And maybe from there, I'm just triggering off a little more questions. Uh, Dr. Radha uh, Raghunathan, thank you so much for uh, joining us and all. thank you for the views that even um, uh, voices like yours are muffled. Uh, but uh, my question to you is why? Why should they be muffled? You know, uh, what do you think are the reasons apart from the whole power politics? What could be more uh, philosophically more uh, more basic? So, if you can reflect on us on that, it'll be nice. Uh, on uh, Hansel and uh, Savio, both of you were speaking about the delusion aspect. Uh, one says uh, there is delusion, the other one says there is no delusion. Uh, can I ask you, what do you mean by delusion? I, I'm just a little more deeper understanding of the meaning of the word illusion. Uh, that might help us to enter more and ask more questions. So basically this why hour is not, uh, as uh, rightly Lindsay said, it's in the last 15 minutes that we would like to some praxis or some yes. impact, but then we would like to raise more questions. So let us raise, and so my question to you is why? Yeah, okay. Um, I think this has always been history, like uh, whoever is in power tries to suppress the others to stay in power and to grow more powerful thinking that they will remain powerful forever, that they will remain in power forever. So this psychology has always walked our human history over ages as I see it. And I also see that such an attitude has gone to such um, wretched levels of wiping out you know, pages in history. I mean, let me... Uh, um, uh, uh, give this uh, example. This is the, the north-south divide, the Aryan and Dravidian uh, uh, identity. We see that, you know, even the uh, archaeology which was going on in Kiridi was unnecessarily stopped when, you know, a certain thing, uh, when a certain um, group comes to power. Because I feel they feel threatened to see that we have had a wonderful civilization. But then recently we come to know that, yes, this has been more than 3,500 years old civilization on the Kaveri Basin, which we cannot ignore. But how, can, how do they ensure it by not providing the enough infrastructure or funds or anything to continue with this so that over a period of time, if this is going to dry up, you know, this, this will dry up in our pages of history and what will remain is what they go on feeding. And so this Goebbels... Uh, a law is going to go on, you know, whoever is going to be in power, they are going to try these arm twisting tactics. And uh, so voices like ours are scattered, even within a majority. And in a majority, now today, the majority somehow, it just believes, you know, like the herds mentality, it is going in one direction. And that is saddening. People don't want to think. They think what is being fed to them is the right thing, whether it is history or philosophy or religion, all of it has, is rolled into one to say, this is our identity. This is India. This is Bharat. This is Jai Bharat Ki. All this is going on. Um, that saddens because we have been a beautiful, vibrant society, culturally, quite vibrant with all the heterogeneity and today it is uh, uh, very difficult like I cannot tolerate the next person is uh, some but we have always called ourselves in a very tolerant uh, culture I mean civilization but where is the tolerance I don't see the tolerance around me I feel isolated basically that's the thing so I don't see any philosophy here I don't really see power here that's what I'm saying. Because if, if it is philosophy, philosophy always talks about humanity and oneness. There is this thing, compassion. Whatever philosophy we take, there's always the underlying this thing is compassion. But I don't see that compassion now. It's dry. 
So well, I don't see an actual philosophy which is underlying whatever is happening. There is more power hunger that is at uh, play now. Well, actually, I also have another question which I would uh, like to put out in this uh, forum. Is it the question of security that sort of makes us, you know, hold back our voices or, I mean, of course, we have spoken about voices being muffled, but on the whole, is it the consequences uh, that people are afraid of? Because we see... Uh, many of the great leaders also, many of the great spokesmen also in the country uh, on certain issues tend to play the safer game. And uh, so therefore, because after all, for a person, his life, his family is something that is more dear than the other issues. So in a way, could this be one of the uh, issues why voices are being muffled? And secondly, if this is the case, so uh, then what could be the uh, possible, uh, you know, the possible way out of it? So this is, I think, something which is the need of the R in some way or the other. Hansel, I think your microphone is, uh, your fan is in full speed or something. Um, yes, to, uh, I mean, to the, a large extent, it is the fear of safety, not of just one, the oneself, but of those around that person who wants to voice out. That is uppermost. At least in my case, I have to think, you know, a thousand times. But now, you know, we are a very small group. So I'm feeling very confident, and especially with uh, Father Seelan, I feel very confident to speak out. But if it was a larger group, I would not have opened my mouth. I'm telling you, and that's something which Dr. Seelan knows about me. I will not open my mouth in a very large group. I just stay silent. That is because, you know, yes, I have this fear, not just of myself, but those around me. I don't know how it will affect, uh, who's listening where and how it may boomerang on them. And that makes me responsible for their safety too. As much as I, I'm concerned about uh, some person whom I don't know personally, I'm as, I mean, I should be concerned about somebody who I see, I mean, uh, who I should take care of, right? So this is not just me, but it is the case for most of us who want to do something, but we, uh, we have to think a lot before we take the next bold step to come out. Also, we need the support. Without support, we simply cannot know. It cannot, it cannot be a one-man army. That that will not you know uh, work. Here, you need at least you know two three peer, two three uh, minds you know to come together. Like my, I mean, there have to be some uh, this one likeness of uh, thought. Without that, we cannot achieve anything. If I I think in one direction, another person thinks in another direction. Though all of us want to you know peace, all of us want to you know freedom. Where does it lead us to? Thank you. Always uh, in our circles also, as ma'am had told already, we talk about this prudence, prudence, you should be prudent or we should uh, know what is practically, what works out practically in our life. And uh, at when you're placed in a situation, we have so many things and uh, we have to think about all that. So by the time we think about all those things and come to a conclusion, <laughs> the things, uh, the time passes uh, and uh, the right moment is already gone, is way behind. So uh, in this situation, especially 
the news is news uh, is outdated within a day we need we have we are in a position to act immediately to give our voice immediately and to give out immediately we are not able to give because of all these questions and pressures from all the sides i feel that not only fear but also uh, some idea of being prudent and being smart to act in a better way okay we uh, we are we are uh, having an idea uh, an idea to voice out but we are always in search of a better idea is there a better idea so the delay because the because of this uh, we are getting delayed and the right moment uh, uh, passes out and the next situation we are in next situation and the same pattern i, I find uh, the same pattern repeats itself uh, so uh, now uh, it's a challenge how to how to come about uh, come out with a solution or without re- with a response immediately at the right time uh i think um, uh, what hansel says has a point on uh, uh doing it immediately but i think there is also a, that is also one of the strategies being used by those who want to spread hatred and polarization they don't want us to do any deep thinking so you make situations in such a way that you jump from one issue to another issue today there is this issue and tomorrow there will be a petrol issue the third day there will be so you keep on uh, making us uh, jumping and i think as people who begin to reflect uh, we need to ask this question uh, we need to become aware of their cunningness uh, their that strategy i think quite often we don't realize that uh, this sense of false urgency i would call it a sense of false urgency is being created and so respond immediately respond immediately because any standard response requires time while while why what they are doing let's not put it as a opposite camp but let's put it as a camp which wants to infiltrate polarization or uh, hatred that camp wants to actually uh, deviate keep deviating and so i think uh, hansel has a point in saying we need to be answering immediately but at the same time i think uh, we need to also hold that ground hold that ground Uh, and that is i think is rather uh, difficult yeah so uh, thank you for the, i i also am reminded of a sharing by some sh- social activists they had come to pune and they were sharing and they also mentioned this point so you take an issue don't move on to the next issue when another issue comes but hold your ground go campaigning or try to make people understand the reality of one situation and if you are able to win or if you are able to uh, have some success in one situation then uh, we will be able to do it in others as well i basically have a question uh, especially with regards to what dr robin uh, just shared like uh, is there a case of the audience at large being distracted in i mean like that's that could be one of the policies right that could be one of the strategies that is for example you make the opponent play the game the way you want uh, him to play so i mean in most of the games you see that you tend to trick the other into believing something which is not right and then the person focuses all their energy towards that and then ultimately quietly you tend to do uh, whatever you want to do let me give a clear example with this for example the coronavirus issue the cases were rising all that was there and we see that uh, during that time the amount of prominence that was given uh, for the death of uh, sushant singh rajput's case so there also we see that probably i feel 
that that was some kind of just you know a distraction to deviate the mind of the people from any major issue to some other issue which is like not uh, important or or a relatively harmless issue and then sort of so you in a way you tend to sacrifice something that is less in order to then protect something that could really cause you harm or so so that could be one of the thing because why not like why because at the moment you can't show a completely perfect face right so you have to sacrifice something for the other so probably i think distracting could be or is one of the strategies which uh, is currently being used so people like us who want to think who want to uh, raise our voices or do something are then distracted towards other things because there are so many things coming up you do not know what to focus on and as a result you are led to focus on something that is relatively less important and less harmless and less harmful to the others wherein uh, then the other issues which are really important tend to just be overlooked Uh, as you are saying uh, rightly lindsay uh, i have uh, two observations one is uh, the tendency uh, to keep us always on an emotional high what is the emotional high means i will take you to uh, sushant singh's uh, murder or suicide you know i create a sensation around it and so your emotions are all trapped into that so the other one the other point is the balance between the head and the heart is never there in the society so in order not to allow people to think you create entertainment you create sports you create ipl you create uh, olympics you create so one of the great uh, uh, industries that survives with the help of politics is sports industry entertainment industry well we very innocently we jump into that bandwagon and say wow uh, uh, it could be football or it could be uh, tennis it could be uh, cricket you know you just get into that back temporarily you are made to forget and i think uh, that is a very very important uh, uh, straight or important uh, twist that these guys keep on doing now consciously it's being done i am aghast when i look at newspapers publishing sports news on the front page now oh. so where is this uh, where, where is this whole uh, idea of uh, human uh, worth taking us to is it just entertainment so yeah so what you are saying is uh, leading me to another insight yeah. uh, others also could uh, talk isn't it uh, lense uh, yes of course the okay. flow is open so you could invite someone some of them might be feeling starting troubles shyness uh pravin would you like to uh, say something what are your thoughts i am just listening to you father and i am <laughs> thinking what to speak no i mean of course you would have certain issues i mean you would have uh, experienced certain things right because yeah yeah so i would like to speak uh, on the uh, stand from me case that uh, yes he was uh, now he left and Uh, he is gone now from us and he is no more now but whatever we have we have done when he was in jail and uh, so many uh, what we call candle march and so many so many activities have taken place uh, 
and uh, I saw I I saw him when I was in Novisat. He was uh, sometime he was inviting us to uh, participate in some of the seminars, and uh, we were very happy that he was uh, I, uh, he was initiating the the activities in Bagicha, and uh, I was very much. Uh, uh, happy that in this old days he was able to do, and uh, at present I see in at present time I see that we the uh, people of uh, full enthusiasm and uh, full courage and full strength, and uh, even though we are not able to do. And uh, even for standing with those people who are working for us, and we are not able to stand for them, those who are working and those who are being caught uh, and being trapped by the political reasons or by enemies, and uh, we are not able to stand for them. What is the problems? Um, I don't have. I, I don't have any idea about that. But what should be done at this situation for the uh, people, especially for the youth, so that they may be able to stand uh, at such a uh, situation? Thank you, Father. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, uh, Praveen, for those thoughts, and which has also provoked yet another question. Uh, that is, uh, okay, now we speak about, uh, for example, as Praveen spoke about the whole uh, San Swami incident, which all of us are familiar with. Now, what do we see is that certain things tend to, you know, fade off very quickly. For example, just take a look in the first month when the case was fresh. I mean, like there were protests everywhere. I mean, like, you know, silent marches, candlelight uh, rallies, news anchors basically talking about that, a lot of write-ups, etc. Over the years, I mean, over the months now, it uh, is slowly sort of fading away and probably over the years, it would be forgotten just as any major tragedy taking place everywhere. My question would be, how can you still keep something alive in this way? Or is there some other kind of way wherein you know, you could basically utilize such incidents to awaken the masses, awaken the uh, sort of the critical thinking in the people, or are these just sort of uh, incidents that are just at the emotional level, therefore, they tend to sort of ignite people only for a particular moment or so. I think uh, Francis Xavier had raised his hand. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I have been listening from uh, a presentation. I think after 10 minutes, I joined the group. So from there, whatever I have picked up, I have been, uh, uh, I have been thinking uh, a lot about uh, what you are telling. So I would like to share a few things. First one is, uh, my first point is, the thinker also needs to analyze his thoughts because uh, in today's society, I have seen most of my friends, maybe scholastics or the laity outside world, they have their own favorite, uh, maybe it's not a stand, they take a particular stand. So whatever the politicians say, it will be, though it may sound good, for them, it will sound very negative. Uh, for me, uh, I don't take any stand. For example, Modi ji, if I take uh, our present prime minister, uh, I like his idea of uh, Swachh Bharat, but then the freedom is that the concrete step towards that is very, we can question what was the concrete step taken towards Swachh Bharat because all are very uh, shallow, uh, ideology. The idea is good, but then the concrete step towards that is very much lacking. Uh, in the same way, um, it is a clash of 
ideologies in present uh, government if we see uh, why lot of uh, commotion why lot of uh, opposition is because of ideology when you are in power you want to uh, enforce your own ideology on the uh, people and ultimately people resist for certain ideology which curtails their freedom so uh, that is the first point second one is that um, i have been to last year i think uh, now i think one year ago cab was the citizenship amendment bill so at that time uh, i am coming to the point why i am mentioning this one most of the people here at tamil nadu were not aware of uh, including uh, some of us but then uh, once once it became little severe a lot of protests were going on then uh, we were doing lot of activities in philosophy philosophical studies then uh, when i went for ministry to my parish youth were not not, not even they were aware of citizenship amendment bill and uh, many not only where i went so many people they asked me what what really cab is all about and why i am telling this incident is that there is no awareness and the third point is related to the second point uh, father robin was talking about sports in my place uh, after playing games we sit for a while and talk about politics education and lot of things we discuss after playing in my place but few people are not interested in uh, in thinking they are not interested in thinking all those ideas all those uh, government policies the reason is that many are not very much passionate uh, they are not passioned into all these things they don't get any interest they feel they are not benefited by thinking they feel uh, it is not their passion and i would say ultimately why this awareness is not there in present society especially among youth is that simply because of education in education we don't feed the minds we feed the minds we don't train the minds we feed a lot feed a lot but then there's no training of uh, present how the society functions all those uh, it is i i would say ultimately it uh, falls upon the educational system thank you okay thank you uh... francis uh, for those thought provoking views and uh, well from most of the discussion uh, or most of the views that have been shared i think one thing that really comes out is that we need to sort of you know create this kind of critical consciousness in the people a kind of a awakening yes an awakening is there it does take place but also we need to create this kind of ability of the people to think and i think that we need to start this right from the school level i mean those of us who would be in the teaching line i think for them also you know in their students through regular activities we need to introduce this skill of thinking of the skill of questioning and uh, that is why at snri it was decided that you know we try this initiative of the yr wherein we question se- several things and also bring certain issues to light so again a question that could be put up to the entire floor we just have 4 minutes remaining is how can we i mean we can take a quick round on this how can we create this kind of critical consciousness in today's youth in the people and uh, especially should it start right from the school level or when do we actually begin this anudeep might be interested in starting the conversation when i was reading this can you hear me yes i'm just out from okay i was i read that book called uh, richard dawkins god delusion the idea came god is just making up of human concept 
same is something like freedom also i thought it is something that we are always talked about as a topic but never experience what is freedom within ourselves so when once, once we are not experience what is freedom within ourselves we cannot really realize it one my one of my friend came from china i asked him how, how do you feel in china he always told me that i always feel someone is watching me i walk in the street i go to church i go to the market i feel always someone is watching me i think such is one situation that we are in here now for few years we also feel that we are watched what we talk what we eat or so such kind of freedom the problem of freedom exists in our country as rightly let's say pointed out but what is the way out is again somehow we have to start the critical thinking asking ourselves how do i experience i maybe i am a phenomenology maybe studying how I, so far how i experience freedom in my life i have i have this personal problem sometimes to experience freedom i always wait for a right opportunity to express actually knowing that there is no right opportunity everything is a right opportunity for me even now i was waiting for that right opportunity to speak maybe that is one of the from my personal problem i think it also become the part of the problem secondly there is a sense of audience people are just public audience sense of realize i am only an audience or i am only a public but i don't know when we realize that i am a person i am a citizen maybe the growth is from an audience to a public to a citizen maybe that growth has somehow we have to take place and that maybe starts from the schooling that each one of us are citizen of this country and they have a right the freedom is their right i think but from there we need to build up the freedom of expression that's what i understand i believe by realizing that we are citizens of this country thank you thank you I think Paul Raj, you might be interested in saying something. You have not opened your mouth, Paul Raj. Yes, sir. Good evening, all. I think uh, I would like to listen to all of you. It's a wonderful to listen. So next time I will try better luck. Thank you. so friends uh, i think we have come to the end of today's uh, session of the yr wherein we basically spoke about this whole issue of how free are we really free so this being the first uh, session of course there would have been plenty of doubts and plenty of ways how are we expected to proceed but i think uh, from today's uh, session from today's discussion there have been plenty of Uh, good points actually that have emerged and if we noticed whenever one of us shared you know it was always thought provoking and always leading somebody else to question something else or to intervene with some other point and this basically as i explained earlier has been the goal of this forum wherein we want to encourage you to sort of reason out to uh, think critically so that then you too can uh, spread this to others around you so on this note i would like to thank all of you all for actively participating in uh, today's session and we look forward to having you on our forum in the next month the topic and the date will be communicated to you by mail so till then uh, thank you and stay safe